This is the Mile High Five podcast with Carl Jensen and Doug Cunnington. We have authentic conversations about the journey to Phi, health, happiness, and some very odd tangents. We interview Phi experts, side hustlers, people on their way to Phi, and those who have reached the other side. Join us every week, and if you want the show notes and links and all that other stuff, head over to milehighfi.com. Hello, Van Life World. Welcome to the Mile High Fi Podcast. I am Carl Jensen with my co-host. I'm Doug Cunnington. Today, we will talk with Terry Slater, a financial expert with a remarkable story and some fascinating fun facts. Not only did Terry attend four different colleges and earn a business degree with an emphasis in finance, but she's also related to a famous basketball player, used to run a cake business, and even can talk like Donald Duck. Why, oh, those are some wide variety of skills and talents. <laughs> Terry has firsthand experience as a financial counselor for a nonprofit organization where she assisted people with bankruptcy counseling, foreclosure, mitigation, and debt management programs. She paid off over $200,000 in debt and had to navigate challenging conversations in her own relationships along the way. She also just bought a van and is fixing it up. She is about to hit the road and live the van life. We caught you just in time. Terry, welcome. Who are you and what do you do? Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Um, so I, who am I is such an interesting question, right? Um, I'd say that I'm a, a pretty uh, at peace, happy, middle-aged lady. I'm new to empty nesting. I'm about to be new to van life. And um, professionally, I'm a financial coach. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a really short answer. <laughs> All right, let's dig into some of these fun facts here. So okay. I I did research and yeah. looked at your website. I didn't have to dig very hard yeah. for this. Otherwise, it gets weird. Yeah. Um. So first, when you answer these, can you answer in the voice of Donald Duck a little bit? Okay. So if you put it, I mean, if you write it down, someone's going to ask you. It's like your resume. I know. Um, I'll make it easy, though. So what famous basketball player are you related to? I relate to Larry Bird. Did you even catch that? <laughs> that was good, Larry Bird, and you're talking like Donald uh, Duck. I, I see what you did there. Yeah. He was not more circuitry or the circuits. Okay, so, no more of that. That's yeah, good yeah, enough. Yeah, that was good, yeah. <laughs> um, thanks for humoring us. I didn't tell you that we were going to do that. Yeah. Um, how did you develop that voice and why? Oh, that okay, this is such a weird story. I was watching a movie. I I forget the name of it. I looked it up. I feel like it was something like Modern Times. There was an old Chevy Chase movie when I was like a little kid. I was watching. I was probably like 8. And in the movie, like so inappropriate, right? He does like a whole bunch of cocaine. And then he like starts floating around the bed like he's literally floating and he starts talking like in this Donald Duck voice. And I was so fascinated by it. I was like, I have to learn how to do that. And so I just like practiced and practiced and practiced until I just nailed it. <laughs> really? It paid off. It paid yeah, off. And yeah. then uh, quickly, what what four colleges? And you could answer in your normal voice, Yeah, yeah. Please. Thanks. Thanks. Um, okay. So originally right out of high school, I went to Ball State. I actually studied deaf education. Like I'm deaf in one ear, so I studied deaf education. Um, uh, and then I came, I moved back to Omaha where I'm from. And then I went to, um, Metro, the community college there. And then I went to the university of Nebraska at Omaha. Then I moved to Colorado and I took a few years off and then I finished my bachelor's degree at UCD down in Denver. Got it. Okay, cool. And Ball State, that's Indiana, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Got it. All right. Are you good at basketball? I am not. Wow. So Larry Bird got the skills, you got the Donald Duck voice. I just got the, the yeah, yep, yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> and he's a cousin? Like yeah, a so he's a cousin, relative. so like, it, I mean, he doesn't know I exist, but I, he's my fifth cousin, so like my great-grandfather and his dad were like first cousins. Got it. Like so, my mom's a bird, so that's her maiden name, so. Got it. Yeah. And I don't know, for some reason, I like when you said, uh, oh, fifth cousin, I'm always like, that means you can marry him. So like oh I always God. equate, you know, if you're like, ah, oh, cousin, it's like, is it a marriable cousin or not? Oh, that's funny. Weird thing, if you dig into the laws, um, there's only like a handful of states where it's actually illegal to marry your first cousin. Yeah, right. I don't know why I did that research. I've heard this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I wasn't researching it for a specific reason, just yeah. to be 100% clear. Yeah. This sometimes brings up all kinds of Sometimes you just hear things and you're like, I need to look that up, right? Yeah. 
there's there's a a very horrible rabbit hole you can go down when you start researching <laughs> that stuff. Um, so I don't recommend. But let's get into it. So Terry, you've told your story about getting out of debt before, uh, but so people can understand a little bit, could you summarize that quickly, please? Mm, yeah. So in my former marriage, so I'm divorced now, but in in that relationship. Uh, let me just say that, like, I came into it with a lot of debt. Like, I just, I, you know, made all the mistakes as a young adult, had a lot of debt. Um, and then I paid off most of it. I paid off, you know, all the credit card debt, but not like my car loan or my student loans or anything like that. And then we had saved up. And after we got married and, and had a child, we bought our first house, well, the only house. And uh, just, there was so much like continued overspending through just like lifestyle creep. Um, and so like over the years, as our income fluctuated, like the spending never slowed down. So even if the income was dropping, um, the spending never slowed down. So, um, you know, although I had gotten out of debt once, I kind of got back into debt again. We got back into debt. Um, and by the time we started the debt payoff, which was in 2012, it was over two hundred thousand dollars in debt, and that was not the house either. So it was it was a lot, and I mean there was like IRS debt, you know, there's like home equity loans in there, like you know all kinds of stuff. Um, and so yeah, our communication around money was not good. Like, and as the money person in the relationship, like I managed all the bills and everything, and um, he was definitely really good at spending. Also, um, our conversations and communication were just not productive. It was challenging. So it took us six years and then we paid off all that debt. Um, I did actually kind of take him through the whole Dave Ramsey financial piece, which it serves some great purposes. And and in other ways, I hate that program. <laughs> um, but it, it has steps, which I think is like really key for most people to just have like steps that you can kind of fall back on. So like it was never on me. It was like, okay, this is the next step, you know, Dave said, this is what we should be doing next, right? Um, so yeah, it was six years, 200000 So we divorced a year and a half after that debt was paid off. And I have to say that to me is like one of the absolute best parts is that that was all gone before we split and we didn't have to deal with all that. $200,000 is a lot of debt. Was there any college debt in there? And if not, what was it? Yeah, yeah. There was my student loans. Um, I had probably all in about $65,000 in student loan debt. We had a $50,000 home equity line of credit. Um, I mean, we owed like $13,000 to the IRS one year. We had a camper that we had bought. Um, you know, that was all financed. And then the credit cards, I mean, God, when you have a credit card that has like, you know, a $25,000 line of credit on it, and it's maxed out for years and years and years, like that kind of stuff. It was just like keeping up with payments the entire time that we were in debt our debt payments monthly were like $3,000. So, I mean, just alone. So that's not snowballing. That's minimum monthly payments, right? So it was a lot to just keep up with once you, you know, have accumulated all that. And you were doing financial coaching at the time, right? Yeah. So how do you reconcile, or yeah. like what happened? Yeah. Well, I, I think it it really is this happens in a lot of financial professions, truthfully. Like, I know that I see it a lot. We can be really good at helping other people and directing other people, but we just may not be doing it ourselves, right? And so for me, um, he was self-employed at the time. And it was basically just like, you know, when the money came in, I just made sure that the bills were paid and I would shuffle things where I needed to shuffle. But I wasn't like budgeting. We weren't being intentional. Um, there, We didn't have like oh, God, we weren't even saving. Like, we didn't even have any retirement savings. Like, we had cashed out our 401ks, like, at one point. So it just, like, we were doing all the things wrong and not working as a team, not having, like, combined goals we were working towards. It was like, how do we stay afloat? Um, yeah, so really, when we sort of made that shift in 2012, that's where I was like, okay, I, I like, I got to get serious. And, like, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about money every single month. And so we just devised the plan and started from there. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And I, like we said, you've been on a, actually several podcasts where you talk about this in depth. So we'll link up to to some of that so people can can go deeper. Yeah. But let's transition into the van life stuff. So you said you're you're uh, upcoming empty nester, and we've had some uh, you know off the record conversations, and you've been planning this for a while. Can yeah. you kind of 
just talk about yeah. um, leading up to it and I don't know, just what's going through your mind right now? Because like the yeah. van's out front yeah, right now. Right, right, right. Yeah, I need to go get some lumber <laughs> right after this. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's one of those things where um, I, I've loved camping. I don't like sleeping on the ground anymore. I feel like I'm too old for that. So like I enjoyed having a camper when we had one, but it was a big tow behind trailer. And once we sold that, um, I started looking at like, you know, the big Mercedes sprinters like way long ago, but it's like, that's just so freaking expensive and ridiculous in my mind. Like, I don't want to be at the mercy of trying to find someone that can service it while I'm on the road or anything like that. Um, so I've had my eye on, um, you know, like both the Dodge ProMaster and the Ford Transit. And I actually rented a ProMaster last year and took it to the sand dunes and I realized I didn't love it. So the Ford Transit was the pick that I went with. Um, and it's just been one of those things that I knew, um, I'm a big city girl. I love big cities and Longmont doesn't feel like my place. And so I've always known that like once, once both of my girls were kind of launched and on their own, which they are now, um, my youngest just moved out last Monday, uh, that I was not going to stay here. And so I'm currently renting an apartment. So I sold my house after the divorce and I'm renting and my lease ends in like three weeks. And I just, you know, everyone has known for a couple of years that it's like, yeah, once that lease is up, like I'm buying the van and I'm hitting the road. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. That's cool. So you tested out a van, you rented one, checked it out. Yep. Um, one weird thing, and I think I told you about this, Carl, like I watch a lot of YouTube and occasionally like camping stuff and then some van life things popped up maybe like 18 months ago and people build out their vans, they'll, they'll show vlogs and they're just like out doing stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not going to get, I'm not planning on doing uh, any of that work, but it's really addictive to watch. Yeah. So did you like go down the deep end with all those videos and stuff like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? I I know exactly what you're talking about, but no, I didn't really because it's just been something that I've been talking about for so long, but it was just in the background. And so, you know, it's only been, I guess it was like three weeks to a month ago that I actually went and bought the van. So I just was scoping out prices and vans. And um, I do plan on building it out myself. So I would say maybe two months ago, um, there's a company called Project Van Life, and they do like one of these virtual summits. Um, so I did, I did um, attend that virtual summit, and then they also have like a, I don't know what you call it, like a Van Life Academy kind of a, you know, series of video tutorials and stuff. So I did pay for that. So I was like, okay, I need to at least know what I don't know. And there's a lot of tutorials that are organized in a really specific way there from a lot of different people who have already built out a lot of their own vans. So. I've been able to watch that and just kind of know like, oh, okay, so I need sound deadening before I insulate. All right, I need to do this for flooring and do that before cabinets and all that. Yeah. Yeah. You ever watch this stuff? I have not. What were you going to ask? I, I was just curious. So, Terry, when you bought your van, it was completely stripped down. It wasn't finished in any way, like a cargo van? Is yep. that how yep. what you'd call it? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. It's a cargo van. It used to be like a budget rental truck and it's just a complete shell still. So. <laughs> What is the process and how far along are you now? I'm not very far along. So the process, I have, I really had to like clean the whole thing out first because it had like all the cargo like liners and bolts and all that stuff um, in it first. So I had to like strip out all of that and clean it. And then I've done some um, like sealant like because you can get leaks, right? And so that's the worst thing that you can have when you're out traveling. So I've had to like, you know, go through and like seal it and make sure that it's like solid and watertight. And then basically it's like, I need to just like prep it, insulate it. You stud it out like a house, right? So I need to, that's the process I'm starting on now is studying it. Um, and then you'll, you know, put in your floor and put up your walls. And I will just say this too, like I plan on building out the whole thing on my own. Cause number one, I just really want some DIY projects, but also like, it's just me traveling. So I'm totally okay to basically do this like dry camping. It's not going to have a shower. It's not going to have a full-blown kitchen. It's going to have like a bucket and some sawdust. There's not like the whole like composting toilet. It's it's basically just like how can I like make sure that I can get from like point A to point B and have a place to sleep. Got it. Yeah. And we're going to be jumping all over the place. We have like a couple pages of questions, but 
what are you doing with all your stuff? Like you had a house and then yeah. an apartment. So is it in storage or what are you doing? Yeah, I've done a really, really good job of downsizing like everything that I don't need, period. Um, so uh, yeah, my the remaining few things that I am keeping are going into a storage unit, which includes my car. So I have a car and um, some furniture that's going to go into a storage unit. Um, and then everything else is pretty much just being sold. Wow. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy. <laughs> well, and I guess you were preparing for it for a long time. So yeah. it's not like you're surprised right. or like you're probably just excited. You're not like mourning the loss of like oh, having yeah. to like drive your car around town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not mourning the loss of like any like stuff, like just. Simplicity just allows you to just have so much more mental free space to just wake up and go do and be and enjoy. So, yeah. Do you have any like construction or DIY experience specifically? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't have like construction like background or anything like that, but just like being a homeowner. I mean, I definitely have done like, you know, all the kind of DIY things of just like, you know, wiring outlets and, and you know, putting up drywall and stuff like that, too. So. Um, I've really, ever since I sold my house, which that's been four years ago now, I've just been craving projects. And when you live in an apartment, there's not much you can do. So yeah. I've really been looking forward to this because I knew that I wanted to be able to like build stuff out myself. You should have talked to Carl. He has like a hundred. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> he always needs help. Yeah. <laughs> so, so before we start talking about the travel stuff, what, um, what areas are you most maybe not anxious, but where do you think you're going to have issues with building out the van? Because I know there's like some more complex stuff. Yeah. Um, any areas where you're like, this is going to be the most challenging part of the build? Oh, uh, that's a really great question. So admittedly, I did already call um, one of the, so there's a bunch of local like van build out companies here in Colorado, and there's one in Longmont. And so I called them recently and just asked them, you know, are you guys willing to do like any of this base build out stuff, you know, just and they, they were very polite. <laughs> and like, what's your budget? And I said, please don't laugh. So um, it wasn't going to work for them to help me out with too much of it. Um, but I did have them install the vent fan for me. So that's basically because you're you're cutting through the roof, right? And penetrating mm -hmm. that and having to make sure that everything stays watertight. And there's a little bit of wiring in there, too. So um, that's the kind of stuff where I'm like, I'm going to need to call on a little bit of help for that. Um, aside from that, I would say, you know, like some of the like cabinetry and stuff like that, I, I'm, I feel like I might be having to like do a little bit of research and, and reading up on before I really get that solidly down. Cause mm. I definitely want to measure like five times before I cut once. Right. right. <laughs> so, so much planning has to go into it. And I've seen a couple of those build outs. Again, I, I watch this stuff. It's kind of, kind of fun. But it's amazing how they can fit more storage into these little areas of like dead space right. where like, I think maybe like a cabinet like under the sink and they're like, yeah, there's all this dead space. We cut a hole here and there's like a little secret compartment that opens up and you could put whatever in there. Yeah. I don't even know what. Yeah. So there's like every nook and cranny is filled up. With yeah. Some yeah. You do look for all those spaces because you've got to just be able to utilize everything in a smart way. Yeah. yeah. Is your van going to have a battery array on it, like solar panels, any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, or? so I have a solar generator already. Um, yep, so I'm not planning on like wiring in much anything other than like the fan and then just being able to plug in a couple of electronics here and there when I need to. Um, so yeah, I bought a little solar generator with, you know, a couple panels on it. So that's ready to go. Cool. What, what brand did you get? I got a Jackery. Jackery, okay. Yeah. Cool. And you said no bathroom, just a Home Depot bucket and some sawdust. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Cause I mean, honestly, it, like for me, that's like, it's going to be an in case of emergency only, right? Like I have a gym membership that's a nationwide gym. So that, and part of my travel plan too, I don't know if we were going to talk about this later or not, but part of my travel plan is also like trusted house sitters. So that's an app that you can download and um, it's essentially like a free exchange. So if people have pets, plants, you know, whatever, and they want to go on vacation and they don't want to board their pets, you can come and stay in their house. They get a free house sitter and I get a free place to stay. So I already have a whole bunch of house sits lined up for my first like stretch of travel. So I don't really like I'm not going to be like living out of the van the entire time. I'll get somebody else's bathroom and kitchen and all that stuff too. Cool. Yeah. And then did you, 
Were you already doing those house sitting gigs? Only or? just a couple to get reviews. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Elizabeth and I were just talking about that yesterday. Yeah. So we may catch up with you on that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Anything else on the build out, Carl? I was going to say, Mindy knew someone who had a van. It, it was an old crappy one. This was probably Van Life 1.0 or 0.5 or even less than that. <laughs> He had some kind of toilet contraption in the back of the van. And what it was is it was some kind of thing with a hole in it. And when you would look down it, you saw the road underneath. Get out. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know the details if she used that or, yeah, I'm not sure how that, well, I do know how it works, but hopefully if he wasn't uh, polluting <laughs> our highways. But. Right. My hope is like you fit a bucket underneath it, like when you're going to use it. So like it yeah. doesn't just go into the road. Let's hope That's so. my hope. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I hope for that as well. Wow. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about what you're, where you're going to go once you have this done. And you have three weeks, you said, right? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. quick. It's very quick. Okay. Yeah. What is the first place you're going to go? Um, Pacific Northwest is mm. going to be my first stop. So you know, I'm, you know, born in, in the, raised in the Midwest, like went to college in the Midwest, like, I really don't need to see the Midwest, right? Like, I feel like there's much there that I just don't need to see. So I'm really looking forward to just kind of like traveling, like the West, South and East coasts of the US. So yeah, Pacific Northwest is my first stop. Okay. I've thought about the van life. And one thing that would give me some anxiety is where do you stay at night? I know some people go to campgrounds and some of them have electrical outlets. Some sleep in Walmart parking lots, although I don't know if Walmart still allows that. Not always. Really? Okay. So how do you plan for where you, you're going to park at night? Yeah. So I again, I do have a bunch of different apps. So there's another one that's called Harvest Hosts. And they also have kind of like a sister app that's called Boondockers Welcome. So like literally, if one of you was willing to let someone like me, like just park on your driveway and sleep for a single night, that's boondockers welcome. So it's usually people that have acreages and stuff like that. And they're willing to let van lifers or RVers come and stay on their land for a night. Um, but the other part of Harvest Hosts is like breweries, wineries, golf courses, museums, places like that. And they all sign up to be a participant on the app. Usually the rule is like it's only a one night stay. It's not an extended thing. And then, you know, just to, to you know, be kind and, and all of that, too. It's like if they are a business, like if you could, you know, please be a patron of their business, you know, buy a beer or, you know, go bowling or, you know, whatever, eat at their diner, then that's just kind of the goodwill for that, too. So I would say between Harvest Hosts, um, Trusted House Sitters, and then there's another app, too, that's just like a, I think it's like freecampsites.net or something like that. And it has paid and free, but it basically lists like every single place that you can camp. Um, some of it is like stealth camping, like if you're just like parking on a city public street. Um, and then others are, you know, if there's like a state park that, you know, might not be a really big one, um, but they at least have maps to that kind of stuff, too. So, yeah, there's a lot of resources to pull from. Cool. I was driving across country one time and I learned that some states, at least they used to, let you sleep in the rest stops. And I think Nebraska was actually one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I feel like that's, I guess I thought that was the majority, maybe because every time I've ever been through a rest stop, that's all I've ever known is that there is usually overnight parking there. So, yeah. Okay. So you said you're going to the Pacific Northwest first. How do you find, how do you plan where you're going and how do you plan what to do? How do you find interesting things to do once you get there? Yeah. How do I plan where I'm going? I would say the first thing that I did, and I've been just sort of, you know, curating like lists um, for a while now. And the first thing that I did was I, I found a, a list of like the best month to visit each state. Um, and so uh, that's where I got word that June was the best time to go to Oregon. So that's why I'm headed there first. Some of it is just to kind of be like a snowbird and get away from Colorado. So like, I'm sure I'm going to spend, you know, winter months like warmer down south. Um, I've done very, very little, but some travel on the East Coast, like during the fall. And that's gorgeous. So it's mostly just kind of like timing um, and for where I want to be and, and, you know, how long of a drive is it going to be and all that kind of stuff, too. Um, and then as far as like finding things to do. I guess I would just say this is where I'm going to like really lean into my hobbies. So I have um, like I've got an electric bike that I'm bringing along with me um, so that I can just kind of like cruise around cities and not have to drive the van everywhere. 
Um, but I have a stand-up paddleboard. I love to do that. So I'm obviously going to be aiming towards locations where I can do that. I like disc golf. So if I can find like, you know, community there and just, you know, um, be able to, you know, play and just have fun. Um, but also, I don't know if you guys do this very often, but like libraries and coffee shops, you know, they often have like a community board. Like even locally, I've always done this. I just love to just look at the community board. And sometimes people have really fantastic just like offerings and things that are going on. So I feel like that's always going to be part of what I do, too, is just to go and see like what's happening in the community. Like, what can I attend? And uh, I just want to like check out the people and check out the place and and see what else I might fall in love with. That's awesome. Are you going to be working while you're on the road as yeah, well? Or? Yeah, I will be. Yeah. And I, I have I have a job that is like easy to do 100 percent remotely. So, yeah, I'll do that. I actually just ordered all of my Starlink Internet stuff um, just the other day. So um, I'm not going to have the Rome kind where you can be connected while you're driving because it's just me, of course. So um, but, yeah, I'm going to use Starlink Internet to stay connected, too. Uh, so I'm curious, I've been following Starlink a little bit too. They just give you a device and then the device turns and finds the satellite, like articulates or? Yeah, yeah. So um, there's a, there's, you know, a few different kinds, right? You can have it for home or you can have it for like Rome. Um, and then there's also the kind where you would essentially like mount it on your vehicle so that you can be connected while you're actually traveling. Um, but this one is essentially just like a really small little satellite dish that you can just like set outside. And I ordered like a little Ethernet connector to it, too. Um, and so I haven't received it yet, so I don't have it yet. But I did check it out this morning, like on the app. You can pull it up and look at it and see like where are the obstructions so that you can kind of also know like if you need to like move away from a certain area. Um, so I've read mostly good things about it. Um, some people have said that when they're like in really super remote places that it's not always reliable. But I don't imagine that I'm going to be in like super remote places and trying to work. Like if I'm in super remote places, that'll be like weekends. So. Right. What's the um, like cost of whatever you ordered? Just curious. Cause I haven't looked yeah. at all. Yeah. Um. So the actual like satellite device was 600 and then the monthly service for it is, I think it's 125, 150. I think it's 125. Um, and you can also pause it. So you don't have to be paying for it all the time. You can pause it for like a month at a time too. Okay. Yeah. That's not too bad, I guess, with the capability that you get. Yeah. And I figure I pay like 80 bucks a month for my like CenturyLink fiber at my apartment right now. So I'm like 125 yeah. to be connected anywhere seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. That's so awesome. I remember um, like the 3G hotspots from yeah. like whatever, 10 or 12 years ago. And I actually, I worked, this was un, unapproved. But I was like working on the road. We were road tripping yeah. and I was using the hotspot. So I would like lose signal every now and then, but it was good enough for like email and uh, like chat. Right. So it appeared as though I was at my desk working at home. Yeah. Just good enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the other, the other thing uh, related to planning is I assume you like road trips. I hope so. Yeah, I do. Um, what kind of uh, road tripper are you? Do you have a lot of slack in your schedule where maybe you uh, meet some friends in a town and they're they're like, hey, we're going up here for two days. You should check it out if you have time. Yeah. Or do you like plan really um, like every minute? Yeah. yeah, no, I'm not an every minute. I have all kinds of slack in my schedule. So the I would have to say the only thing about me is that, and luckily I'll be traveling alone, <laughs> but I'm one to like not stop. Like I've got a pretty ironclad like, you know, system. So I'm like, I don't need to be stopping a lot. Like when I drive back to Omaha, like I generally tend to try to make that an almost one trip. There's right. usually like a quick, like five minute fuel up, but there's no. It's yeah. Like NASCAR. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm not like eating on the road and going to the bathroom a lot. Like that's, that is one thing that drives me a little batty when people need to like go to the bathroom like three times on a short drive. I'm like, wow, okay. So yeah, yeah I'm glad it's just me. But yeah, I, I feel like time-wise and flexibility and freedom-wise, like I'm totally cool to go with the flow. And yeah, if people recommend like, go check out Crater Lake, great. I will make sure that I can do that. Um, yeah, so cool. pretty pretty go with the flow. 
Cool. Just a couple more questions on this topic. Do you consider yourself to be an extrovert or an introvert? Oh, that is such an interesting question. So when you actually, when you actually like, you know, do look this up, like introverts, essentially, like you can be extroverted, right? Like I am happy to like go speak on stages, like no problem with any of that. I have a YouTube channel too, like all of that kind of stuff, no problem. So I would say that that leans in the extrovert. However, I want to like recharge totally so. So I actually consider myself to be a fairly like classic like introvert. So I have extroverted like tendencies in the like public space. Um, but people don't give me energy. Cool. Yeah. And one more follow up question. You mentioned that you go to libraries and coffee shops to look at community boards. Yeah. Are there any websites or Facebook groups or anything else like that that you use to meet up with people in new places? Oh, um, that's a good question. I think I would have to say so far, no. Um, but then again, that's also because I'm just getting ready to venture out. Um, however, I will also just say this and also saying this for anyone else that might be listening is that as a solo female van traveler, I really don't intend on publicizing where I am until after I've left. Right. So I'm like more than happy to talk about like the great places that I have been. But I really don't necessarily want to like talk about where I am or where I'm going mm -hmm. just as a safety concern. Yeah. Yeah. And for reference, this will publish like like in a little while. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No worries. And you weren't. Oregon's a big state. I was or was say, it I'm Washington? Not, I don't even remember. Yeah. I was like, I'm not being very specific anyway. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But I also feel like, you know what? It, I mean, for years, people have been doing that, right? Like they post on yeah. Facebook, like headed to Maui. And it's like, ooh, maybe yeah. post that after you get back. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Carl and I are the opposite. We're like, hey, we're going to be over here. We're alone. Yeah. You know, if you want to come over, <laughs> hang out with us. I've been yeah. drinking too much already. You know, that's that so thing. funny. <laughs> but yeah, that's smart. Yeah, you got to be yeah. safe. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on to kind of the lifestyle, your daily routine. I don't know. It sounds like you're transitioning right now yeah. anyway, and things have kind of been downshifting a little bit. But like, is there anything in your routine that you think you're going to miss being in the van? Um, I don't think so, because mostly my routine like involves just like being really active, right? Yeah. Like I'm one of those where like when I wake up, like first thing in the morning, I like to just go out for a long walk. Um, so I feel like those are the kind of things that are going to be even more available and probably pretty cool. Um, no, I, I feel like most everything, I mean, I, I'm a creature of habit. So like I eat like the same foods every single day. Um, but, uh, you know, it's also all pretty simple too. So I, I feel like most everything should be uh, really like transferable to this style of life too. Well, speaking of meals and such are you going to have like a small fridge or one of those coolers with a i don't know how they work exactly yeah. sort of peltier device is that what they call them but anyway Ooh, yeah interesting um i haven't decided on like a cooler slash refrigeration system yet i probably will just do if i do either i will do um a cooler because there are certain coolers that can also be solar powered um, and some of them have like a freezer side and a refrigerator side. So maybe I might, but I don't know if I would actually need that yet. Um, so I'm not going to do like a fridge though. I'll probably just have a cooler that can of course like double as like my bench seat while I work. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, aside from that, like I said, I'm kind of doing it almost like dry camping. So like I have a jet boil, like I, I can, you know, on just that little like fuel canister, like I can cook in my one little skillet, I can have my hot water, I can make coffee in a French press, like mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Um, so I feel like it all is just going to be a really small self-contained like little kitchen. Nice. Yeah. Cool. And it sounds like you also downsize quite a bit. So yeah. like staying organized is not going to be a, a big deal. And it's just you. Um, any concerns about just, I don't know, how to keep everything all together? Yeah. Yes. I actually have huge concerns over that. So like I have a running list that's in my bedroom right now that's basically just like a sort of like a reminder of like, you know, like, okay, like I said, I have a gym membership. So like I have a little bag that has all my gym equipment stuff in it. And then I also have like a lot of like office supplies. And of course, I need like my toiletries. And then of course, I need clothes. And then of course, I need stuff to eat. And 
spices and a little bit, you know, all that. So like I have in my mind the divisions of the categories, but the actual laying them out and where they're going to go and how to organize it, because I feel like the organization is key. One really interesting thing about this, and and again, I say this a lot, but I'm like, I'm kind of grateful that it's just me because I'm okay to also like just hit the road and like learn as I go. And so if the build out is not done before I leave, I don't care, right? Because I feel like I'm going to eventually get to a point where it's like, oh, you know, that space above the driver's seat, like I could easily put this there and that would make sense, right? So I also feel like just doing this and living in it for like a month or two at a time is going to help me to kind of figure out like what is the best way to be organized. Um, but yeah, I do feel like I need like a trip to Ikea or something because <laughs> I need I need to like get some sort of organizational stuff together, right? Because when you look at like cabinets, van build cabinets, like you can even buy like done for you, like just DIY cabinets, but they're just like a big open empty space. And like, that's actually really cluttered if you're just like shoving clothes in there. So I do feel like I need to like have some organizational tools that I don't have yet. And it sounds like you'll, you're will you just going to have like minimal amount of clothing, right? Like you're going to wear the same four things or whatever. Probably. Yeah. I kind of do anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like I'm pretty simple in that way. So yeah. yeah. Funny thing, you know, the Costco just opened up over yeah. here and I was, I went over there, Carl, uh, Monday morning. So it's not too crowded. It was after the, it, it just opened yeah. here for the people that don't know. So it was very exciting. Anyway, I bought a fucking pair of pants. I'm going to be wearing, uh, I haven't tried them on yet, but yeah. I'm going to be dressing like you soon, Carl. In Costco clothes. <laughs> no offense. That, that sounded negative, <laughs> but uh, you're a fashion. Um, yeah, you look nice. Yeah. Everything I have on now is from Costco, except for our mile high for mile high fi shirt. Yeah. Yeah. It looks all right. I don't know. Okay, what's next? <laughs> is it you know, one quick one quick follow up to this uh, part? Is it easy to have a healthy diet when on the road? I think so. I mean, like I said, I I'm a bit of a creature of habit, so it is no problem for me at all to eat the same foods like all day long every day. Um, and I've really been kind of doing that for like years. So. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not even like drawn to fast food or anything like that. So I feel like as long as I can, you know, buy stuff to like make salads or like I eat, I mean, I just like as an FYI, I mostly eat kind of like a, a paleo diet, right? Like vegetables, meat, fish, nuts, seeds, things like that. Um, a lot of eggs. So I feel like all of that stuff is like really easy to prepare, really easy to just keep in a little cooler. So yeah, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Good. It's not going to be like truck stop taquitos. I'm thinking of no, those things on the rollers no, and like they've got hot dogs and they're all different colors. So, you know, some of them have been on there for like a week. None of that. Yeah. None oh, of that. Okay, cool. Right. Good. Yeah. And I was thinking of like, uh, I think Cracker Barrels sometimes let people stay. And I'm like, that's a, another great place. I love like the garbage food, basically. I love it. I could eat it all the time. So like the road trips, it's like, oh, should we eat at Wendy's or like? Even McDonald's occasionally. Yeah. Like I'll even eat a McDonald's. Yeah. Oh, I have no yeah. problem with eating McDonald's burgers. Yeah. Like I don't. Yeah. Okay. I really yeah. do. But All right. I don't. I mean, I do it like twice a year. That's about <laughs> it. So just a special occasion. Yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> Doug, are you saying that that Cracker Barrel lets you stay in their parking lot or? You know, ch check and see. I've heard. I've heard that on some video on YouTube so you I've know it's trustworthy. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah, I think more so than like Walmarts. I think Walmarts have like cut down a lot, but I think Cracker Barrels are usually down yeah. for that crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can go in there and buy a cheese log or whatever else crap they sell in their little yeah, gift they, shop. Yeah, they got the <laughs> general store. Their biscuits are good. I, yeah. I like I the Cracker Barrel. You're making me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> we should have a live recording from there. It'll be unauthorized, maybe uh, just like staying in the parking lot. That's great. <laughs> we could play that little game where you jump over it with the golf tees, you know, the triangle oh, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'd be Those awesome. Okay. okay. I think we're going to talk about money next. And before we get into this, I want to ask you a question, Doug. Have you ever considered this whole van life thing? Would you ever do this, Doug? Not um, slightly. There are some interesting aspects. I really like road trips and I like the flexibility to like, you know, not have to stay in a hotel. Um, but I, I wouldn't do it like super long term. I know some people will go out on the road for like, 
several, several months, but kind of like you're describing Terry, where, you know, maybe you're traveling for a little while, maybe a month or something, and then you house sit or you like visit family or whatever, and just kind of have a home base. Um, but like moving every single day wouldn't be ideal. Um, and then I think, I mean, there's a lot of space, uh, where I live, we have tons of room here. So I like, I like to have the space and I think being in the van for a little while, I would be like, I got to get out of here. Like, just give me a hotel, a regular hotel room and a, a kind of lodge or whatever crappy place. Um, and I'd be all right. So, but I mean, there's some cool aspects. Like when we road tripped, um, drove up to Alaska, that was great. And being in a van would have been super convenient. And up there, like through Canada, a lot of people, they just pull off on the gravel road and they just stay there for a night. So super common. What about you, Carl? Yeah, I have considered this. And Terry, I want you to tell me how I'm thinking right or wrong about this. But I thought about it from a money perspective, which might not be the best place to think about it from. But what I came to is you're actually going to pay a premium to do this for sustain at hotels after you get past the initial purchase of the vehicle, maybe the build out, uh, the fuel. They're not going to be nearly as good on fuel as a smaller car and perhaps paying to stay in at, at a campground. And I know you're probably not going to be doing much of that, but is that correct? Have you thought about it? And I guess the compromise I came to is something what Doug said, maybe uh, staying in hotels and maybe even having a Tesla with an electric, you can have a bed in the back and they have climate control. So if I needed to, I could just camp in the back of that and then move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I feel like there's a lot to say about this. Um. So I'll start by saying that, number one, I'm giving up my apartment, right? So I'm no longer going to have a housing payment. And I paid cash for the van, so there's no loan on it. So that's done. I'm paying cash for the build out that's done. Um, so yeah, mostly it's like insurance, my storage unit and fuel and food. And so that all still comes to like a third of what my existing living expenses are, which is still also really low anyway. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I originally, when I first was thinking about this, I thought, I want to go travel to new places. And if I find a place that I really love, I'll probably just like rent like an Airbnb for like a, you know, a couple weeks or something, check out the area and whatever. Um, But then when I stumbled on trusted house sitters, I'm like, well, I get now I can do that for free. So I just I feel like and again, I've got the bike that I'm bringing with me, too. So my intention is only really to drive the van on like the long hauls and then my sits, my house sits, I'm trying to do them like in the cities. So that I can just kind of ride my bike around and stuff. And I plan on mostly traveling in warm climates anyway. Um, so I think that'll be helpful as well, too. So, yeah. Cool. Is your van diesel or fuel? No, it's regular fuel. Okay. Yeah. And did you buy it new or used? I bought it used. So it's a um, 2018 Ford Transit 150 medium roof. And, uh, yeah, there's a, a broker here in Longmont that they get, like, all of the old, like, budget rental trucks. Um, they, you know, kind of like fleet vehicles almost. So, uh, yeah, it had 80,000 miles on it roughly. And um, I'm not a super great negotiator, but I did okay negotiating. Um, so pretty much all in, I bought it for just under 28,000. Um, and then i planning on doing the build out for... I'd like to stay under 10,000. So. Okay. Cool. And what are the ongoing expenses with van life? <laughs> I feel like this is maybe to be determined. Um, you know, I already took it into to a, a mechanic and had him, you know, go through everything, you know, so I've already done like, you know, new tires on the van. I've gotten all the, you know, everything, all the fluids and everything all checked and exchanged and all that kind of stuff too. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, essentially it's just kind of like, I'm just looking at it currently as like just a road trip expense, right? Where it's just like gas, you know, a little bit of maintenance, like here and there, hopefully not a lot, Mm -hmm. um, and ensuring the thing. So. And you mentioned, um, I guess like the, just the road trip costs are about a third of your, what you were paying for your lifestyle. Yeah, Yeah. 
um, how accurate do you think the estimates are? Because like you, you're, you haven't started yet, right? right? So once you get on the road, you may be like, oh, fuck. Yeah. This part is way more expensive. Yeah. Food's way more expensive than I expected. Yeah. So how accurate do you think your estimate is for your budget? Like for the whatever the first six months? Oh, I mean, yeah, uh, maybe I'm being super naive and there's something that I just like have not thought of. But I mean, like my all in like monthly living expense right now is like three grand. Like it's I feel like it's pretty low and that's with an apartment that I'm paying for. So uh, like I'm estimating that it'll only be just about, uh, I mean, thirteen hundred a month, like all in for van life. So, yeah, that feels like pretty low to me but i I also like i said i eat the same foods and i eat really healthy food so i feel like yes fuel expenses are going to be different as i travel across the country in different markets and areas and things like that but like yeah sam's club costco like i I mean i shop at like whatever i mean hell i shop at walmart for a lot of my groceries but i can still buy a lot of organic there too Mm -hmm. so i don't feel like my groceries is going to be that significant of a change either so yeah like i said maybe i'm being naive but i really feel like there's not going to be too much fluctuation so i think i'm being pretty realistic what do you think carl that seems too cheap to me i don't know i don't know i'm thinking (laughs) like we just have this new costco here so that's on my mind but you could go have a hot dog three times a day that's (laughs) a buck 50 i think at all in so you're 450 a day uh what does that come out to a month like 130 dollars a month something like that and all your nutritional needs. Are I know. Different. I know the don't eat the bun. Just order the I don't dog. Don't eat the bun anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. And then you'll be fine. Then it's healthy. I think. Right. I think it's the <laughs> the bun is the unhealthy part. Uh, see, here's the thing. So this is the part that I'm estimating because I just don't really know. And I, for the record, two things. So let me finish one s- statement first. Gas. I'm thinking somewhere in the ballpark of like six hundred dollars a month for gas. I could be crazy wrong on that. That's to be determined. Um, but again, I'm like doing like trips and then stopping for like a week and then trips and then stopping for a week. Um, so that's, that's my thought around that too. But also I am, I am totally willing to also say if this sucks and like seven months in, I'm just kind of like, I don't love this. That's totally okay. Like I have no qualms about just saying like, I think I'm done with that. That was fun. Like that's no problem to me too. And you know what that reminds me? I think I have seen a couple uh, YouTubers where they were like, yeah, I've done this for a little while, got it out of my system. Like, well, I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. It's fine. It's great. Yeah. And I'm like transitioning to something else. Totally. I feel yeah. like it's like a two year max thing for me anyway, yeah. period. Like two years. Okay, cool. So how we talked about the finances and stuff, and it'll be interesting to hear like how the actuals match up. Um, How has it impacted your overall financial goals and strategy? So we haven't talked about any of that yet, but yeah, yeah, you could put it in any context you want to. Yeah. I mean, I guess the only thing that, you know, I would say, so when I sold my house a few years back, um, I just invested all the money, right? And I I threw most of it just into a brokerage account. So, um, So I, you know, cashed out 30 grand to buy the van. And, um, you know, like I said, the rest of it, I'm just kind of cash flowing. So, you know, it was just kind of like, to me, I look at that as just like a one-time hit, like a one-time chunk that I took out. And so, you know, now I just am continuing to like rebuild that, but got it. yeah. Then are you working, um, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, um, are you working full-time or just part-time? Full-time. Full-time. Yeah. Okay. And well, you won't have to commute anywhere. So yeah, right. And and the company is like completely open to remote work. Like they don't care if you live in Bali, right? So it's like remote is fine as long as you can operate on Pacific Standard Time. You know, like nine to five. Very nice. Yeah. All right, Carl. Where are we at here? Uh, let's go to reflection and future plans. Uh, what's been the most rewarding part of this whole thing so far? I knew you're, I know you're very new to it so far, but has there anything that surprised you? Like what's been especially great? I think what's been especially great is like when I share with people that these are my plans, like especially women. Um, it's been a little bit surprising to me, but whenever I tell people about it, I guess I would have expected a lot of people to be like, oh, wow. Or, you know, it's sort of a, a, a weirdness about it or whatever. 
I everybody that I tell that these are my plans, they are always just like, that's cool. Or I wish I could do that. Or like, you know, you know, tell me I want to hear all about it. So I think that's been really fun for me is that everybody seems like so genuinely excited. And maybe I don't know, maybe that's because when I talk about it, I'm so genuinely excited. Like, I know I feel like I light up when I talk about it, too. So it's just cool to not have like any anxiety around any of it. It's just like I've been talking about it for so long that I just knew that it would be my reality. And now it's here. Very cool. And I think we covered a lot of this, some of this stuff. Um, Sounds like you're not going to be traveling to the Midwest. You're going to hit Pacific Northwest. I will be in the Midwest a bit. So again, yeah, I'm from Omaha and I've been in Colorado for 26 years now, but um, I will. It's my 30th high school reunion this year. So I'm going back for that. And then a month later, my nephew's getting married. So I'm just going to stay in Omaha and visit my family for a month because I don't really go back all that often. So it feels good to like, I'm just going to stay there for a month too and um yeah so and i'm seeing someone that lives in denver and so i know that like i'll be back and you know staying with him for you know periods of time too so i think it's going to be just like a lot of off and on but yeah i have pretty much now through october planned out cool yeah very nice all right so what does a perfect day look like and maybe you could imagine what it'll be like on the road you could pick whatever location you want Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, perfect day, I would say, is just, you know, to like get up, open the doors and sit in the sunshine, have a cup of coffee, go for a nice long walk, um, you know, explore nature as much as possible. Um, but then also, which I would probably reserve a little bit more for my like afternoon or evenings is to, you know, explore whatever city that I'm in. Um, yeah, I mean, I love camping, but I also like really, really love cities and the energy especially of like big cities um so yeah i would say that my perfect day is just like it's 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 slow it's casual it's good cup of coffee like have some food go for a long walk um you know hopefully meet some cool people like get in some paddle boarding or you know a nice long hike something like that um yeah a good fulfilling work day is always really awesome to me like i super enjoy helping people so like if i can help some people along the way and, and just like enjoy my life. That's what feels good. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Terry, this has been a lot of fun and we're excited for you. Thanks. Very excited. Where, where should people find you? Um, yeah. So I'm actually transitioning my, um, my Instagram account. So I, I've renamed it so you can find me at Terry dot in transit. And it's T E R I. So yeah, that's where I will have all of my van adventures. All right, cool. Yeah, we'll link up to that in awesome. the uh, show notes so people can can follow along. Very cool. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the show. That was the Mile High Five podcast, and I'm Doug Cunnington, the Balder host, and Carl Jensen is the cool, sexy one. If you dig the show, please do three things for us. Number one. Tell a friend, a family member, an enemy about the show. We really don't care who you tell. Maybe forward them a specific show that you know that they will like. It's the single most helpful thing that you can do to spread the word. It's like giving us a virtual high five. And uh, actually, we don't give high fives in, in person. So the virtual kind is pretty good. And more importantly, your friend or family member or even your enemy will appreciate the fact that you were thinking of them. Number two. Make sure you're following or subscribed on your podcast app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, YouTube, whatever you're using, and that way you won't miss a show. And number three, please leave us a rating and review. We read them on the show occasionally, and you might hear yours out there on an upcoming episode. Quick disclaimer, this show is not financial or legal advice. I'd actually be surprised if it sounded like it. It's really just for entertainment, and that's at least what we're hoping for. But seriously, get advice from professionals. Carl and I are just two guys with microphones that sit in my basement and talk. So we'll catch y'all next week. Carl, you were in Omaha, so what were you doing there? That's right. I was at the Berkshire Hathaway meeting. That's Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger's conglomerate. How'd it go? 
It was pretty good. It was very full. I didn't know how many people would be there, but the whole entire, I forget what they name the venue it's at. They change it like every year, seemingly. It was completely filled up and they had a holding room or an extra overflow room, I guess I'd call it. But it was good. Uh, The one weird thing was Charlie and Warren were not quite as optimistic as they usually are. They are actually quite pessimistic. They said the good times are behind us, which was Stark contrast to what they usually say. Gotcha. Like, they're behind us for good? That sounds dire. Yeah, it, well, they're probably behind them for them because they probably have <laughs> another year or two at best. So the good times may not return before they croak. But I, I don't know. I should have asked them to elaborate on the time frame of that. Gotcha. And then, Terry, have you ever been to one of those? I have not. No. Okay. No. But that seems very interesting to hear, like a doom and gloom like prospect, um, especially coming from those two. Yeah, that's really interesting to me. Yeah, it was a little bit scary. I wonder if um, specifically Warren talked about how he bought TSMC stock, which is Taiwan Semiconductor, and then sold it five months later because of concerns in the China Strait, Taiwan Strait. Uh, sorry, I'm butchering that up. Someone's going to be angry. A lot of people will be angry. Uh, And it's not like, if you know about Warren Buffett, it's not like him to quickly buy and sell something. His mantra is, I buy to hold forever or something like that. So I don't know if he has insider information or what, but yeah, kind of scary. So you, uh, you grew up in Omaha? I did. Yeah. I accidentally, I have a funny story. I accidentally said born and raised. I'm not actually born there, but I've lived my entire life there. I was only born somewhere else because my mom was back in her hometown for a funeral. But I went to um, the airport to get my like global entry. It's kind of like the step above, you know, TSA pre-check. And they do an interview with like a federal agent, right? And he's just conversational, just, you know, tell me about you or whatever. And and he's like, so you're from Omaha, huh? And I said, yep, born and raised. And they're looking at like my birthplace is d- different. And he was like, he gave me this look and he's like, born and raised. And I was like, no, I wasn't born there. <laughs> I've actually never said that before. Born and raised in Omaha. I've just I grew up there. But it's so funny to me that I made that mistake in like a really crucial, like wrong moment. The only time it yeah, actually mattered. Yeah, the only mattered. time it mattered. Yeah. So there's something above TSA pre-check. So what's the global entry? Is that this for like Global entry is like for, yeah, when international travel, you get to just like skirt right back into the U.S. real quick. Okay. It's like facial cool. recognition and you're through. No lines. Got it. It's super cool. Have you used it yet? Yeah, I have. When I came back from Dubai and Bali. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Wow. So we'll have to look into that. I'm, I don't do much international travel right now. So yeah. that was my first ever trip. So I thought first ever, but I plan on doing more. So I'm going to make that investment. Cool. <laughs> yeah. 